Initial planning for the barn required a flowchart showing every action the player could perform and how that action would affect the player and player in response. After initial flowchart and storyboards were created, I researched the look of Australian farmland, houses and barns from around the era where the game was to be set. My research for this production included the Quixel documentation, Unreal documentation, Autodesk documentation, and the VES handbook for game design. I also researched Adobe documentation, SpeedTree, Pro Tools, and Unreal Engine plugin documentation. Part of my research was identifying games with a similar genre and style that were advertised and displayed using cinematic and gameplay trailers. Part of my aspect of production was producing functional life. I had to create and maintain an accurate production schedule to ensure the production was completed. This involved decisions such as reducing certain render settings that made a small impact on overall quality but reduced render time. As director for The Storm, I directed the crew in look development, story, camera and object animation. To create good looking characters in an efficient amount of time, I used Autodesk Character Generator to design and create realistic characters with accurate levels of distance. For Kintsugi, I rigged two characters for motion capture and face wear. The character rig for Lightbox was more involved, with a full control rig needed with IKFK switches, face controls and global independent controls. In the creation of the barn, I made a total of 300 audio files and cues, 110 blueprints, 63 character animations, 10 sequence cinematics, 5 physics assets, 1 font asset, 23 IES assets, 500 materials, 305 static meshes, 17 media assets, 42 particle effects, and 600 textures. For better overall look, I'd utilise SpeedTree to create and use Australian native flora such as red gums and rainbow gums. The majority of assets created for the barn were designed from the start to be modular and used with instant static meshes for more efficient level construction. The majority of textures made were utilised in a variety of different assets to decrease the amount of material calls the engine needed to make at start time. Look development for the landscape and interiors were based on reference images. As development proceeded, the design on the level were made consistent. Each part of the game is contained within a separate level. Within these levels are the aspects of each environment. All animation was motion captured, which was delivered to me for export to Unreal. Each character had a variety of different sections of animation which were blended together in engine. Lighting the levels required careful consideration of placement, looks, performance and usefulness. Each environment was lit using differing methods. Level sequences were used to craft the cinematics that take place throughout the game. Each sequence controls every actor loaded into it regardless of the contained level of the actor. Using the node-based blueprinting system within Unreal was both efficient and easy to understand. If using C++ code to create the functionality of the barn, I would have had to write over 1.1 million lines of code. Audio was created in a similar way to Blueprints, with a node-based system to create mixes, fade by distance, and randomised audio. Particle system cascade was used extensively throughout the barn to create immersive particle effects like ambient dust, muzzle flashes, smoke, blood mist, and steam. During development, I encountered a huge amount of bugs that were often initially visually interesting, However, as the development progressed, I required outside testing to find bugs that I would know how to avoid and fix. This resulted in alpha and beta testing of the game, using people both familiar and unfamiliar with the game to test and evaluate, finding bugs and issues with gameplay or design. Creating the trailer used post-production software like After Effects and Premiere to create the effect and cinematic shots. And